What's up WordPress nerds? In today's video, we are going to be continuing on from last week's video, which were, where we talked about headless WordPress with Next.js. In this video, we're gonna be going over how to create server-side rendered pages, and we are going to be adding Tailwind into the mix as well, so we have something to style our site with. Uh, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress videos. And if you're interested in a WordPress caching plugin, I highly recommend WP Rocket. It is my favorite caching plugin for WordPress. And if you are interested in something like that, there is a link in the description. And if you end up clicking that link and buying a license, I get a small kickback. All right, let's jump into the video. As we kind of left off, we had a few posts here. And when you clicked on them, you got some information about those posts, in this case, a title and image and the content. And all of those pages were rendered statically, meaning that they were pre-rendered ahead of time when we ran our build. And it created a set of HTML pages. So if we open up this next folder, server, pages, posts, um, let's, uh, oh, we've got the development build running. So let's do npm run build. Should only take just a second or, or two here. But what that was doing is we were creating those pages uh, statically ahead of time. So we ended up things with like this goodbye Mars HTML and new post HTML. So we pre-rendered all of those pages ahead of time. Now, what we're gonna be doing instead is, um, I'm gonna be showing you how to create uh, uh, dynamic pages. So every single request somebody, um, you know, goes to that URL, it's going to pull that information anew from the server. Um, that is exactly what happens in WordPress uh, just about every time, unless you're using, you know, some sort of caching service. Um, every single time you load up a blog post, it goes to the WordPress database, pulls in the content, and outputs all the things that it needs for that template. Um, and this is going to be useful if you need to do um, some work that is, you know, maybe updated uh, uh, pretty consistently and um, can't necessarily wait for you to rebuild um, your entire app for it to uh, show up with the new information. Um, so let's uh, take a look at how that might happen. So right here we have our posts folder and we have our slug.js. And so that is going to pull in all of the items that we created from this, uh, um, get status back, uh, path function. We had a GraphQL um, query where we were grabbing all of the posts and then dumping them out. Well, in this case, maybe let's create a one-off post where we need to output some Star Wars movies. So we're just going to create a new file here and we're going to call this star wars.js. And that's what the slug of the uh, page is going to be. So we could go to slash post slash star dash wars and this is what's going to show up. And the way that this is going to be a little bit different as well is that instead of doing what we have here with get static paths or get static props, we've already created kind of this path right here. We've already got it named and everything. Um, and we need to get the information into our component. Um, previously, we do get static props, which triggered next to uh, say that this needs to be pre-rendered. Um, and this time, we're going to be doing something called uh, get server side props. And that's all you have to do differently. Oh, I didn't, there we go. Export async function, get server side props. And what this is going to do is every single time that we request this star Wars slug, this is going to run and it's going to do a thing. And what we're going to do is pretty simple. All we're going to do is we are going to fetch from an API. Um, I didn't really love this example of using films because films come out so, um, there's such a long space between when films coming out. I really wish they had something where it talks like episodes of TV shows, like, or, you know, like when Clone Wars was coming out every week or something like that, where it's just something that was constantly updated that couldn't necessarily wait for um, a new build. But uh, this is what we've got. It's going to pull in all of the information from the films. So if I were to open this up, what it's going to look like is it's going to give us a JSON ob object back with the results of, you know, the titles and information about the uh, films. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that comes back to us as JSON. And we are going to set that, um, the data into a props object with their, an object with a key of props. Um, and then once we have that, we just need to set up the template on how we want to display this. And we're not going to go fancy here. I'm just want to show, a little bit about how 
uh, server-side rendering will work. So we export the default function of Star Wars, and um, this could be whatever, but uh, we have an H1 of Star Wars films, and then we're just mapping over the results of what we got from that API request. I'm just setting the uh, episode ID as the key for this uh, map return, and then we've got um, an LI with, oh, and I've got some of, I'm a little ahead of myself, um, an LI with uh, the film title inside of here. So if I were to save that, uh, we can go back. Let's get out of here. And let's, uh, let's go to slash post slash star dash wars. And this is gonna take a little bit longer than normal, but what we should get back is a list of all of these. So that is information that is being pulled every single time. If right now a new movie came out and it was in the API, we could refresh this and we would get that new movie. That is not something we would have to, you know, exit out of our um, our, our dev build and then rerun it to make sure that it has the latest content. So this is uh, super useful in a handful of cases. And um, typically with WordPress sites, um, the typical WordPress site of kind of like, you know, some pages, a blog, you know, things like that, you could, you're almost always going to default to statically rendering it. But this would be great if you were doing kind of a one-off like show piece that was a little bit more uh, dynamic that needed to be different every single time somebody refreshed it or very close to that. Um, and that's really all it takes to get something to render every single time by just using this get server side props instead. Um, so let's move on to actually getting a Tailwind set up. And the first thing that we got to do is we have to install a couple of new packages. So let's exit out of here. And what we need to uh, install, let's clear this out so we can see right here at the top, npm install d um, so to make sure it's a dev dependency. We're gonna do at tailwind slash jit, uh, tailwind CSS actually. And what this uh, jit is, is just in time. If you worked with tailwind before, you know that when you first uh, compile um, uh, Tailwind, it gives you like a giant um, CSS file. And this just-in-time library is uh, the new version that's going to make it so it builds it as you make it. So it's a, a much better way and I, and I can't wait to uh, uh, until this is fully merged in. But this is what we're gonna use right now. We're also gonna bring in the, the rest of the stuff here of uh, auto prefixer and post CSS. Got it all written over here so don't forget anything. And this is all what you'll need in order to uh, get up and running with Tailwind inside of here. And then the rest is just configuration. So before we rerun our build here, let's actually add in a couple of files. So we are going to first off make a post CSS config file. Since we're using post CSS and that's what uh, Tailwind uses, we're gonna create a post css.config.js. And we're gonna paste in this guy. Um, and what this guy is, is just telling us that we wanna make sure that we're using um, the Tailwind CSS JIT plugin along with Auto Prefixer as well. Nothing more to configure there. Just making sure we know that it knows about it. On top of that, we're just gonna put in some boilerplate um, Tailwind information. So this is gonna be Tailwind that config JS. And all this is doing is it's just making sure that we purge our pages because that's all we're using inside of here. So any of the JS files will get purged. And um, that's it. We're not going to go into Tailwind. I want to do like a, a video on just like all about Tailwind CSS because it's my favorite. Um, so maybe we'll do that one of these days. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. Next up is that in this base project, we have this globals.css. We're just gonna delete everything inside of here because that's just what came up with our uh, boilerplate uh, Next.js install. And we're gonna paste in what Tailwind wants us to do. And it's gonna be at Tailwind base component and utilities. And it's gonna give us those red squiggly lines because it hates um, that syntax and I don't have anything installed in VS Code that will eliminate that. So we deal with those now. All right. And so the last kind of piece that we'll need to do here is that we'll need to make sure that this actually gets in queued. Like if we were to refresh the page, it's not gonna, not gonna happen unless 
we have inside of this app is import. And I forgot to take this out, but <laughs> this is what we will, you would need to make sure that you have inside um, your project in order for this to be imported. So you import the global CSS file that we, uh, we've uh, just updated with our Tailwind um, calls. So in your app.js, think of this as, kind of, I'm trying to think of this as just like the entry point to your entire application. So this is going to get included onto every page. Now there's a couple other methodologies about getting a CSS inside of Next, and I'm particularly fond of what they show you here with this home.module.css, which we will go over in a later video, which makes things um, a lot smaller when it comes to how your um, CSS is rendered. So every single page load, it's only rendering the modules that you have included on the page. So we'll go over that another time. But for now, we're just making a, a, a big honk in uh, at globals.css. All right, so if we were to um, do npm run dev and make sure all of our changes take place, we can go back over here and uh, just uh, make sure that we're starting to get stuff in here. So already you can tell that we've got some other stuff going on in here. So let's go to our slash post slash uh, Star Wars. And where we had our um, bullet points before, now all of a sudden things are not the same. Those bullet points are gone, though, which means our global CSS is um, changed. So now we can see these uh, variables here, the dash dash TW, shadows, ring color, all that kind of stuff stands for Tailwind. So let's just double check to make sure that these things work. Let's go back over to here. And what did I have in here? I had couple lines of a uh, couple classes. So let's just copy those. Oops. My copy and paste game is not good right now. Okay. So we're just going to make them bold and we're going to make the text five times as large. And boy, did that make a difference. All right, let's shrink this back down. So now you all of a sudden have access to Tailwind and you can, you know, add in your classes as you want. And so this is going to uh, bring all that power in there. So now you can really get started. Now you know how to make static paths, getting images in there, pre-rendering stuff and post and uh, doing stuff on the server side. And you can use these interchangeably. That's one of the cool things about Next.js is like everything that's that comes up in this slug um, template, everything that gets queried here will be um, pre-rendered when we run our builds, but it's gonna make sure that this gets uh, rendered every single time we refresh the page. Um, because we have Git server side props. So overall, love how easy this is to get up and running with both static and server side rendered items. And hope you guys learned something. I'd like to thank my patrons for supporting me. And uh, we've got another video coming up here in the next day or two. So if you wanna get um, your hands on exclusive videos, um, that is uh, for the patrons only. So if you're interested in some more advanced tutorials like this, um, Go ahead and uh, give that a give that a a look. Um, long story short, thank you for the support. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a like, leave a comment, um, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>